And now I have the honor to introduce uh, our very first speaker. Um, I don't think this man needs introduction, but uh, of course his name is Robert Biglioni. He's the CEO and co-founder of Horizon and Horizon Labs. So I'll please ask you to give him a very warm welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Okay. Cool. Thank you, everyone. That's me. Uh, <laughs> so I would start off also by telling you how emotional I am, but kind of forgot how to cry a few years ago, and I don't want to start right now. So, but Rosario is exactly right. Angie's right. This is a very special occasion. I'm really honored. Five years in the making. We're finally ready, I think, for, from a variety of different perspectives, like finally having enough friends and, and people who would actually come to an event of ours to host ZenCon Zero. Um, so this is a very special occasion. We have a lot planned for you guys. And you can tell, even though uh, you know, we have a really nice packed audience here, this is still a very close-knit event. And I think what was really important for us this year was to make sure that, we, number one, we just do it right, and the ops team has done a fantastic job of getting this to where we are today. So guys, thank you for that. Okay. Okay. Leah, I would point at you for that one. So big thank you to you, but really your team just completely rocked it. Um, so really, thank you for coming. We have a lot in store for you. What I'm going to do, I just have a few important points that I want to kick off this, you know, this event with. Um, but I, I, I don't want to take too long. Number one, because I'm actually being constrained on time. They know I can talk, and they're not going to let me talk for too long. That's a good thing. Uh, and because, let's keep it simple. Let's keep it simple. Number one, let's remember you know, our origins, where we come from. And then we just have a really cool roster of, of people uh, speaking today and tomorrow. It just events, different things that you're going to be able to participate in. Everything from NFT drops, our first NFT collection right on Horizon. That's kind of a big deal. Um, to really specialized technical conversations on cryptographic systems that we work on. You're going to have conversations about, uh, or be able to hear conversations about what we're doing in the kind of uh, VC space, or what's going on in the VC space, VC space of this industry. Everything from finance to community engagements, to community building, to NFTs, to metaverse, to DeFi, to all of the cool things that are happening in crypto. You have some of the smartest people in the world on these different topics here in this room today. Um, so it's going to be really fun, actually. And I, I, I'm going to enjoy it. And I haven't been able to sleep very much. I have a little jet lag. I'm sure many of you do. You're forced to come to Italy, uh, you know, one of the places in the world that people just absolutely want to come. Um, so forced is the wrong word. But you know, some people came from really very far places in the world to join us today. People have come from Australia, China, Korea, US, East Coast, West Coast, people from Europe. Really, it, it's actually heartwarming to just have people coming from all over who are supporting this project. And you can see I talk a lot because I'm already three minutes in and we're still just looking at my face. <laughs> but this is a hard act to follow because if, for those who listened to Eureka's opening presentation today about what's going on with Cobalt and the design, you know, from idea design to delivery and what's going on in the future there, that was actually a jam-packed room for a room that we actually was way too small for her presentation. But that was a great way to kick it off on the technical side, see what we're doing with product because now we're delivering. And this could be a really fun ride in store for us as an ecosystem. Um, so lo and behold, I, I do want to take a little bit of time to talk about our origins because it's really important. We have a lot of OGs in the room today. I'm not seeing that original Zen t-shirt from our 2017 launch party. Rolf, I don't know why you're not wearing it. Too professional looking today. <laughs> so, but it, it's important to understand where we came uh, because Everything in life is path dependent to, to some extent, right? And our journey certainly is path dependent from our origin, uh, but we have a really cool future uh, ahead of us. Uh, so we'll talk about that. And then we're going to talk about where we are today, the state of our technology, the state of our products, the state of the organizations that are part of this ecosystem, and just how we're rocking it, right? It's this kind of small niche project, small in the grander Web3 sense of things, because you know, you go into Binance, we don't have the heaviest trading volume for Zen compared to, you know, like ETH or other coins out there. But we have a lot of really cool things going on, and we've taken the time, I, I think, to do it right and set 
excellent foundations that are really strong, and now we're going to accelerate into those foundations in a number of different ways. I'm more tan now, probably more stressed. I probably look a little bit older. But you can see, this was our launch party, 2017. Uh, it was really cool. And you know, the, the thing to take away from our origins, we, we were a group of crypto idealists, really, at the beginning. And by crypto idealists, I mean, we've been in crypto for a while, like the, you know, the people that were part of launching this project. And we wanted to have our own project where we did things a slightly different way. We we're a very idealistic group of people. We wanted to do things from a very egalitarian perspective. We really believe in open source and just kind of contributions from the crowd in a number of different ways. And I'm not just talking about code, but contributions across the board for how you market, create business opportunities, products, and different things that can work with a crypto ecosystem. And the way we looked at it back then was it's like we were creating this digital world or this digital country. You know, it's like this voluntary association of people that had similar ideals, not always the same ideals, clearly not. People are very different from each other. We, we think in different ways. We have different hopes, dreams, backgrounds, assumptions, and all that. And that's OK. We wanted to create the kind of environment where it was just open and welcoming. And hence our name, Zen, right? Zen was like such a, a nice, warm, you know, fuzzy guy. Like we, we're here. Like we, we, you know, like if you were around in crypto back then, there were some toxic communities out there, and you know, I was part of some of these toxic communities. I was not the toxic one, <laughs> I tell you. But uh, you know, it, it was really, I think, in any kind of environment that's very new, and there's so much money sloshing around so quickly, you know, the sharks swarm in. The sharks swarm in, and they want to, you know, it, I mean, when, when there are large spoils to be had, people fight viciously for them. And this was kind of the state of crypto back in 2016 when we started planning this project. We wanted to be something different. We wanted to be that community that anyone could come and be welcome into. And then we, you know, we really started from these ideals, and, and then we started thinking, what kind of technology is necessary for this? One, it starts with this idea of privacy. And it should be community-based. And for us, it was really this idea of freedom, like freedom of association, freedom of anyone can contribute, anyone can participate really don't care about your background, really don't care where you come from. These ideals, I think, just ring really strongly for anyone, right? I mean, these should be universal ideals. Now, maybe not for anyone, but these should be universal ideals. And that, that was our starting point. I can say we were very idealistic slash naive, but it worked. It just worked in the end. Uh, and we had a really rocky journey initially. And you know, the, our journey, I'm so proud of where we are today, the fact that we can all gather here, and really the average IQ of the people in this room is ridiculous, way above mine. And I'm just really proud of the amount, like the, the quality of people that we've been able to bring into this ecosystem in a number of different ways, working on different things. But when we started, we launched a little bit of historical uh, legacy here, guys, as a project called Zen Cash. Now, Zen Cash, May 2017, launched. We launched to some fanfare. It was actually a pretty uh, fun launch, and we had some really big supporters like uh, you know, the founder, uh, one of the founders of Ethereum and Cardano, Charles Hoskinson, was one of our biggest supporters. We had just a variety of different people from the industry supporting us, and it was great. It felt awesome to have this type of you know, support from people who have been in crypto from basically the very beginning, and then all hell break lo broke loose. Right? And this sometimes happens in the real world. You go live with something, and then there are problems. We had problems on just you know, our organization, people that were not behaving in the best ways, to put it mildly. We had problems with uh, you know, people attacking the project, uh, something called a 51% attack. We had a variety of other issues that blockchain projects have. I mean, you put something out there into the wild, and things start happening. But we, we kind of joked with ourselves at the time. We called ourselves like the honey badger of crypto, you know, just because you couldn't kill us. And we just kept on surviving, no matter what happened. We just took the punches, got back up, and went to the next thing. Right? And uh, uh, the punches kept on coming initially. And I think, that, uh, for sure, this really slowed us down. And it shaped our, our, like, our way of thinking of, about the world and about crypto. Because uh, even a question that Eureka had this morning was, when we think about this product trade-off of, yeah, extreme usability on one hand to extreme security on the other hand, the reality is most products fall somewhere in the middle, and we have to choose where we want to kind of tune our project, where we want to put it in there, or products that we, we put out there. 
And because we had such a rocky start from basically everything that could go wrong in crypto happens to the team back then, we just adopted this kind of risk-averse position or being very conservative and security being a basic premise. Now, I think that ended up working really well, and I think it's going to continue working really well for us because as we roll out products in the coming year and years, uh, having this bent where we can be a trusted organization that just does things right, has solid foundations, and really tunes things, not to be so extreme on security, but at least to be you know, way better than industry average on security, I think is going to pay very, very strong dividends as we go. Now, we've done a lot of things from just this rocky start. I, I kind of look at this as we launched in 2017, and we had our big coming out, and that was one type of project, this very idealistic, community-driven project. It was, frankly, a little chaotic. The chaos was fun in different ways. It was also very uh, you know, enthusiastic and you know, um, natively crypto. Right? This was crypto back then. And then we spent years systematically professionalizing our organization. We realized that we needed a little structure here. Yes, we love open source. We have to keep doing that. This is the way the world's going. But at the same time, just because something's open source doesn't mean that it's safe. Right? And this is kind of a misnomer that's out there, you know, especially when you look at like, open SSL bugs and things like that, where you have one developer maintaining a repository that the entire world is using. You realize just because, again, open source does not mean safe, we need a professional organization at our core that can make sure that we have certain standards that are really just way above average. So we took that time, and then we took a step back and thought, OK, like, from where we launched was one thing, but where do we want to go? This was more important to us. So thinking about that future and like really crafting out a strategy of where's this industry going, but not where's the industry going tomorrow exactly, but where's the industry going in two, three, five, ten years, right? And I can say we were a little myopic by thinking too far in advance. Because I, I really do think that uh, the way we positioned ourselves is going to pay huge dividends as we scale out and as the industry scales out. But frankly, we missed certain things like NFTs, DeFi, right? Some, uh, even the rollout of earlier sidechain platforms like Cosmos and Polkadot and others, I, the, the adoption and convergence on this Ethereum standard is something that it took us way too long to understand. But understand we did, and better to be late than never. And by late in crypto, we're still way earlier than the world, right? So you can see where we're going as a project and our strategy now it's very well tuned to where, like, I, I think we're finally at a point where we're pushing what matters today and then also what's going to matter tomorrow. What's going to matter tomorrow? Scale, interoperability, compatibility, and, and even for us. So this technology, the stack that we've built out, is one that's agnostic to a particular type of consensus. And I think this is key because the one thing that we know for sure is that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Right? That's really the one thing that we know for sure. And what we know today is there's an Ethereum standard in the world. The way that you do smart contracting, the way you build applications, the way you build applications on a distributed system, uh, this is an Ethereum standard today as it exists. Will there always be an Ethereum standard? We don't know, right? But we know this here today. We're integrating that into our stack today. And this, I think, is when we launch this EVM, Ethereum Virtual Machine, integrated into Horizon, which we now have on a testnet, this is going to be, for us, a new coming out of sorts. So yeah, you could say we're finally catching up to, there were other EVMs out hitting the market, obviously Ethereum, but then the other EVMs uh, that mimicked the same type of smart contracting uh, you know, uh, platform came out years ago. OK, but for us, with Horizon, we're finally launching this thing that really gets us back into that game of where that industry is today. But it's on top of very strong, solid foundations that scale magnificently. Right? And you're going to hear more about that as we go through some of these technical conversations in this, uh, you know, the, the two-day two -day tracks that we have, in particular technical tracks, you're going to see the foundations that we have scale really well because we've built technology that's agnostic to what tomorrow is going to be, but can integrate in anything that does get developed and, and start getting traction in the future. Right? That kind of platform is sort of future-proof. Right? Knock on wood or iron, depending on your culture, right? but it's sort of future-proof. Right? Um, so, now, we took some time to deliberately build out team, build out capabilities, build out backend platform. And this year is the first year that we started delivering on that platform called Zendu, the interoperability protocol. The first thing that we deployed on this thing called Token Mint. Now, again, I, it, in one way, I'll, I'll botch it, but you know, when, when the Americans made it to the moon, this is one small step for man, one you know, giant leap for mankind. This was kind of like that for us, right? Really one small step for 
uh, crypto, having another minting platform, okay, right, big deal. One huge leap for us, huge. Because now, finally, this was a major pivot for us from being a cryptocurrency to being a platform on top of which anyone can mint any type of digital asset. Well, you know, caveat, caveat, fungible tokens initially, and now we have non-fungible tokens on our testnet platform that will be delivered to mainnet shortly. Uh, that's a starting point for us. It's a really big one, but it's not just something that's built into kind of our core protocol, our, our core blockchain. Uh, we did it in a way that is, again, massively scalable and future-proof. We built its own, its own blockchain platform, Token Mint, and it comes with a full suite of things that you would need for a blockchain platform, like Cobalt, like a block explorer, like actually a really simple Web3-based way to mint tokens, adapt to do that. And this, this complete, very well-designed, beautiful package was delivered. Very simple functionality, but beautiful and focused on the end user. And this is a huge shift for us. So for those who have been in the community, you OGs out there, you know we, always ha we have not always been uh, very user-focused in terms of beautiful user, user design, flow experience, and things like that, right? Now we have a team that just obsesses over these things. Again, huge dividends. I, I, I'm kind of a long-term investment kind of guy, and I like to look at solid foundations and things that have long-term dividends. The next thing, you're not seeing it here, but it's our EVM chain. It's that really big thing. So, you, this, is, this is the year we're doing ZenCon Zero. It's the first year that we felt that we wanted to bring everyone together. Number one, it's a corporate retreat. We want to do a corporate retreat every year anyway, but we wanted to invite in our close friends, partners, some clients, really those that were, brought something substantial to the table, some of the you know, brightest minds in the industry, or those just entering the industry who are massively successful from other ventures, from the Web2 world and even before that. People that are coming in, you know, committing to work with us, and we're going to build something really amazing together. So, you know, th this <laughs> very simple, these two different boxes at very different scales sums up basically where, where we are right now in the sense that we were literally just a privacy cryptocurrency last year. That's literally all we were. For all of the ambitions that we had, all of the work that we were doing on the engineering side, all of the hundreds of thousands of lines of code that we were developing, all of that, we were still, fun from a functional perspective, strictly just a cryptocurrency. Now, we are actually much more because we finally launched that backend protocol and the first chains on top of that that have just all of the same functionality that you'll see in the rest of the industry. So it starts off with the Zendu protocol. We have a very large node network out there. Again, like thinking long term, we wanted to get scale quickly. So we have just a very large network. And I, I'm very proud to say, so there are other uh, successful, just from a monetary perspective, other successful uh, crypto projects out there that actually their networks go down every now and then, which is just kind of shocking for you know distributed system that's supposed to be actually decentralized and global that a network can go down. Very proud to say that our network actually has not gone down. Right? So we've had we've been attacked, we've been brutalized in different ways, but we have a very large, robust, resilient network, and now we're going to put this network to very good use. Uh, we've launched a variety of different products, you know, so that people can actually use our technology, use the cryptocurrency, now be able to use NFTs and Cobalt, uh, Token Mint, so that you can actually mint any type of digital asset. The EVM is going to be a really big deal, so any type of distributed application that you can write in an Ethereum environment, you can now cross-deploy into Horizon. Now, from a growth perspective, this is huge, and this is why I call this kind of like our second uh, coming out here as a project, because there's a large world out there in the Ethereum world and EVM you know, world uh, of a lot of robust and very creative intelligent smart contracts and applications that have been deployed. They're very successful. And what this gives us is the infrastructure so that they can easily be you know, cross-deployed into our environments. Now, from our perspective, say like the Horizon Labs perspective, Horizon Labs can go and build any type of distributed application in our own native environment and then easily have it you know, attract users from other EVM or Ethereum ecosystems because we can cross deploy across any of them. Again, compatibility is key here. Yes. And then we have a very strong zero knowledge proof capability, cryptographic engineering capability in house. And we've put this, th this group to use in terms of our interoperability protocol, first and foremost. And then thinking through different types of applications of, okay, ZKPs are a really hot topic, and VCs are funding companies that have uh, ZK capabilities strongly, but why? Because of a variety, a confluence of factors that I'll talk about here. Of in crypto, there's always this like trilemma of scaling. So like scaling because we know that 
yeah, a distributed, like a blockchain is a replicated distributed database where every single node is supposed to validate every single transaction or state transition for anything that happens in, in the world. This doesn't scale very well. Well, there's a class of cryptography that allows us to scale extremely well without having to make trade-offs on, say, decentralization. So what happened over the last few years was that some projects realized there's a big market need to just do certain things, like fast DeFi transactions. And it doesn't matter. Like, these users don't care about decentralization, and that's okay. We're going to compromise that by having more centralized systems, but they, they, they can process things much faster. So you had this proliferation of very successful projects. They were just really fast at transaction processing, and that was fine, totally fine. In fact, they, they had product market fit in DeFi, and they killed it. Um, but then there are trade-offs there. When you have a centralized system, you have trade-offs on security, you have trade-offs on ultimately being able to scale things out. What happens if some of these centralized nodes get compromised and so forth? So what we have now, our foundations and the team, the capabilities that we have, you know, through cryptographic engineering and very smart engineers and architects and things like that, we have the capability to not make this trade-off, to actually offer a comprehensive package that scales, and you'll hear technical track conversations about how we scale with ZKPs. We have high security with it. Again, we're kind of paranoid about security for good reason. Sometimes it's actually good to be beat up early on on the playground, right, because you actually get out in life tougher. Right? And then decentralization, not having to make the trade-off of only you know, centralized, more centralized systems so that we can scale, but actually having cryptographic proofs that actually aggregate things and do things in an efficient way. So we have taken the time, I think, to do this right. You can see the basic architecture for what this is going to mean. And not to, you know, first thing in the morning, let's get into the engineering. But uh, it's kind of important because I want to set the stage for what you're going to hear is we have a Horizon main chain. This chain has been around since 2017. This is that you know, picture where I was not as tan and you know, looks a lot younger and so forth. But that, that was just the simple Zen cache at the time, today Horizon main chain. It's no longer simple. This is actually a beast of a main chain or in terms of sophistication, and we've scaled it out to be able to really scale the ecosystem. So what we have at the core is this interoperability protocol we call Zendu. And it's one that uses cryptographic proofs to be able to validate transactions that happen in any number of different chains, and maybe not even chains. It could be, any, it could be a black box com computation machine that just uses our interoperability protocol. It sends a, a, a zero-knowledge proof certificate back to the main chain. You have a prover on the main chain. And voila, the, the main chain, the public, the world can verify whatever happens on any number of chains. Any number. Today, we can scale, in theory, to something like 10,000 chains operating as side chains in the Horizon ecosystem. We have one operating, so we're not going to you know, claim that we, we're, we're so uh, scaled right now. We have TokenMint is the first production chain that, or side chain that we have in Horizon, but it's going to just snowball from there. The EVM is going to be the snowball moment for us as an ecosystem because we can tap into all of the, you know, the kind of agglomeration of talent and smart contracts and resources that the Ethereum world has. And then we have a variety of other things here, some very sophisticated you know, zero-knowledge proof-based auditing, uh, tools that we're you know, potentially going to bring to market as products, at least have POC today. Uh, and this scales. It's the type of technology that we're proud of. It's taken you know, years to get here. But now you can see it's no longer about just like deep tech. It's great to have that foundation. Now we're going out there to the world, and we care about users. So in Yuriko's conversation this morning, she talked about just we had ideas, some basic primitives of what we thought our product should look like for a wallet. And we very quickly iterated based on you know, rapid feedback from the marketplace, you know, from our own, our own internal users and then our community users. We incorporated that quickly, and now we have processes so that we can just very quickly get new versions out there to production um, you know, that actually look beautiful. <laughs> so I'm really proud of the team for what they've done. Um, again, simple in terms of overall functionality, but really important for us as a milestone for a project and for you know, caring about users. The next big thing, again, the giant leap forward for us is going to be uh, Ethereum compatibility. This is a project that you, know, you guys in the company know I'm obsessing over because I know how important it is for us, and this is why we're all in on this. We need to be Ethereum compatible. We need to be Ether Ethereum compatible fast. And what Ethereum compatible means is we can leverage, again, all of these network effects that Ethereum has had, um, maybe not you know, the TVL you know, for your DeFi uh, fanatics yet, but we do have plans for kind of a, a DeFi blitz within Horizon as well. But importantly, from dev perspective, compatibility with the world of Ethereum tools out there. So we've set uh, business requirements to be compatible with MetaMask, 
We're bringing in EtherScan. So for devs in Ethereum, EtherScan is the standard. I mean, this is a really big deal for us. Using Remix for you know, IDE and dev environment, our own product, Cobalt, we're making Ethereum compatible. Uh, Tokenments you know, is, is something as well we want to be compatible in terms of transactions flowing across. We're going to have a blitz for DeFi, first of all, because I realized, like, like for me, one of the big motivations of this getting into this industry was to decentralize, number one, everything. But I'm a finance guy by background, so I want to really decentralize finance. I think this is one of the biggest opportunities we have to make a meaningful impact on the world. And we're going to go guns blazing when this EVM launches. So we have day one requirements where we're going to bring out there an automated market maker, a borrow lend protocol, an NFT marketplace, DAO tools. Because again, like when you want to decentralize things, decentralizing how people make decisions you know, as with a, like a DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization, really important, but also for product perspective. And then we have a variety of other things, but I will point your attention, guys, because I'm out of time, to the fully provable bridging technology that we want to roll out with this. This is a cryptographic-based, you know, bridging capability, so you can bridge digital assets between chains, but do it in a cryptographically provable way, so that we can actually mitigate this really big industry risk of you know, hacks and, uh, you know, uh, bridges being broken and money being lost. Now, we're going to celebrate as a community, as a company, as friends, partners, with an NFT drop, right? Who, who doesn't want, uh, you know, free digital assets, right? And, but for us, a really big deal. Uh, the design team just did a phenomenal job. I think we have one of the best design teams in the world. You guys rock, totally. And just look at this. So this is uh, just an announcement for our collection that, that we're going to be releasing with this event. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll stop here because we have a really cool panel uh, set up for you. So thank you for coming. <laughs>